are as many ways to celebrate the holidays as there are Texans in Texas. Early Apache Indians in Texas are said to have had a Christmas-like celebration that was actually timed with the blooming of the prickly pear cactus. Here in Texas country, we celebrate the holidays the same way we celebrate each and every other week of the year, by sharing stories about ordinary people often doing extraordinary things. Only at this time of year, those stories are even more inspirational, filled with more hope than ever before. You're invited to come along with me for that celebration. I'm Bob Phillips. This is Texas Country Reporter. Texas Country Reporter, brought to you by the Texas Ford Dealers, best in Texas, by First Ag Credit, we're first in the field, and by Sun City, Texas. We often find people who have discovered a special talent hidden deep within. The corporate executive who gives it all up to pursue a passion, the homemaker who discovers late in life that She's really an artist. And then there's the man we found recently on a hill country ranch who discovered a special warm side he never knew he had. gets more expensive every day trying to keep it keep any of it up you have trouble you know there's always deer tearing holes in fences you need new vehicles I can't afford it so you know really I don't think there's plenty of junk stuff sitting around here while so many places across the state are decked out for christmas you won't find too much holiday hoopla at carl leffler's place out in the texas hill country in fact carl's not one to get too caught up in the joy of the season really he's too busy trying to scratch a living out of the dusty dry dirt folks around here have gotten used to carl's rough edge and quiet ways that's why a few Christmases ago, people couldn't believe what Carl Leffler did with a few pieces of old junk iron. Junk iron, really, is normally what I use. There's no way I'd say it takes any talent or anything like that. It took maybe a little imagination to start with. I made the first one for my wife for a Christmas present. She told me she wanted a Christmas tree made out of barbed wire. She wants one herself, one for each of the kids, and then this one and that one want, wanted one. Seems word's gotten out about Carl's barbed wire junk iron Christmas trees, topped with stars made from broken pieces of farm machinery. Rusty, heavy, yet delicately woven with great care and in great demand. A lot of the ladies just like the rustic appearance. I've had a guy told me that oh, he could sell a bunch of them at Houston or somewhere. He's down in that, that part of the world. Why didn't I make some of them up and holler at him and let him sell them? What's got most folks curious, though, is how this rough-hewn, crusty old rancher who barely ever cracks a smile was suddenly inspired to weave beauty from bits of broken iron and barbed wire. I've had a lot of time to think over the last six, seven, eight years. 
Seven years ago, I was laying in a hospital bed and wouldn't be here if it wasn't for miracles. The cardiologist said I had something like three to five days left whenever they replaced my heart valve. It changes you, the way I look at it. We all need to be changed somewhere. It can change the way you look at junk. You can see something in a lot of things that a lot of people feel are junk. Carl says staring at your last few days on Earth sure can rearrange your thinking. And somewhere inside, an artist emerged from nowhere. And the old home place now is decorated with his Christmas creations. In fact, the whole holiday season has taken on new meaning for a man who's never been too generous with his emotions. Sometimes I think making a Chris, these Christmas trees isn't productive in a way, but sometimes they are. And if they'll bring joy to somebody, well, I guess they are. That's, you know, I mean, I think about bringing joy to other people now a whole lot more than I did. I really do. I didn't want to give up, don't want to yet. Alone in a cluttered pasture, Carl Leffler is busy with the holiday season. Never in a million years did he intend to have folks clamoring for his yuletide art. But after fighting for his life, well, Carl's just happy to be here to see another Christmas. Christmas time, everybody got something to be thankful for. I do. You know, for some people, the holidays never really end. They go on and on in a constant celebration. We found a place in Lubbock, Texas, where Santa is a symbol that never goes out of season. Call it the Miracle on 34th Street, a place where every day is Christmas Eve, where Santa patiently waits out the months in anticipation of December, dressed to impress. Who knew Santa had such a wardrobe? A lot of the costumes we actually make here in my studio. We do kind of a, a woodland or a sort of look. We also do whimsical, we do traditional, and we do more of a European. Sometimes he's a little thinner, sometimes he's a little fatter, sometimes rosy cheeks, sometimes a bigger nose. Some people say that a few of my sons look very serious. Well, it's the European look, you know, and some people like that, and some people want one that's laughing and rolling his belly. I'm a Christmas enthusiast. I always have been. I love Christmas, I love everything about it. My mother refers to me as a Christmas nut, but I think enthusiast is a little bit nicer. Yep, Lynn Haney is crazy for Christmas. In fact, he was so insane over Santa that 18 years ago, he made his holiday break from teaching school permanent and set out making Santa dolls like jolly old Saint Nick had never before been portrayed. A lot of people always say that, that a lot of the Santas look like me, so I guess I'll scope who I see in the, uh, the mirror in the morning. Today, his intricate designs and colorful handmade costumes come to life here in Lubbock but they've made their way around the world. We have a large audience. We ship across the United States. Uh, we've also shipped to uh, Gumps of Tokyo. We have sold this year to a, a company in London called Fortnum and Mason, uh, which is a, the purveyor of gifts uh, to Her Royal Majesty. And then after 18 years, you know, after doing thousands of dolls, you know, in that time period. Uh, we know that we're parts of lots of other people's Christmases.
just like Santa himself. Lynn makes a list, checks it twice, and the helpers go to work. They sew and they assemble, they glue and they dress the most beloved gift giver of the season. It's quality that is unmatched in doll making, and it's a Santa assembly line that would make the Elf Union proud. Every single Santa has a recipe, you know, because we have to make sure that we have all the raw goods to, to actually produce each single one. I tell everyone, you know, you are an important, critical part of my overall concept. You know, just because I designed it and made the first one and this and that, then it's up to you to come up with the same finished result as I made in the very first prototype. Nothing against factories, but I think many times in factories, the decisions have already been made for them. I feel like everyone here as individual craftspeople, they're still making even slight aesthetic, you know, changes every single day. It takes many hands to come up with the final result. Jennifer's working with a different type of wool here. This if is wool Santa usually lives at the North Pole, then this Lubbock, Texas art studio must be his summer home. And make no mistake, Lynn Haney is an artist and these Santas are his masterpieces. Every one a unique original filled with holiday spirit and Lynn's love of Christmas. Our pieces are sold to people who walk into a store and there's something about the Santa that speaks to them. There's something that says, take me home. Whether it's, you know, a wooden train on it and they say, you know, when I was a little boy, I had a train that my grandfather gave me. You know, Christmas is all about nostalgia because these are really not necessary. You know, they're not groceries, they're not a roof above your head, but neither are paintings and drawings and, and lots of other wonderful things. Neither is dance or music. You know, we can do without music. We don't have to have that, you know. I think the world needs these because the world needs, <laughs> needs handmade art, you know. I think the world needs things that are touched by humans. It fulfills something you know, not just for the artists, but for the people who do appreciate the art. And people are always saying, you know, I could never make anything like this, but I love having it and I love enjoying it. And, you know, uh, I feel like I'm sharing uh, my creative process with them. Beyond the trees and the lights, beyond O oh Holy Night, the holidays are really all about giving. Giving of yourself, giving of your spirit, giving of your heart. That's the story behind a special San Antonio organization called Elf Louise. belt right here, your hat, your wig, and your beard. They'll do that here as well as your makeup. You might send someone to the door and make sure that they want Santa to, to be delivering. It's a very busy afternoon inside an abandoned department store in San Antonio. Two days till Christmas, and Santa needs some last minute help. Got your eyebrows, your sideburns, got your hat They call this orchestrated chaos Elf Louise. You look like Santa, ready to go. Excellent. For several days, hour after hour, teams of Santas and elves deliver Christmas to thousands of children in South Texas, just like they've done for 30 years. Louise Elliott was a college student who found her true calling more than 30 years ago, bringing a little Christmas joy to struggling families and the Elf Louise project has grown from a dorm room to a donation center, where hundreds of volunteers wrap and wrangle more than 60,000 gifts every holiday season. We need to check and make sure we have all our bags, right? Yeah. Some people work on it all year long, and then others like us 
show up at Christmas time. Of course, that's the first phone call we make as soon as the Christmas season is ushered in uh, to be sure we get on the list. One, four, five, four, two. Okay. It's down to the wire on this holiday, the day before Christmas Eve, and Lisa, Cookie, and Devin have a lot of pushing and packing before beginning their special Yuletide delivery. And here's the addresses, Santa. Can't we just, just cross over and just down New Braunfels? He said it was right here. But you know what? It's not. Uh -oh. We went up there to the fair, and we went this way. We just crossed New Braunfels. Oh, sure, they made their list. They checked it twice. Posada, La Posada del Rey. But it was the directions that delayed the jolly old Saint Nick on this night. Santa Claus is coming to town. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Hey! A little behind schedule, maybe, but Santa finds his way. Never too late for the children. Robert! All right! Robert. All right. <laughs> How you doing? Were you a good girl this year? I love the way they went up to Santa and they put their arms around. That's what I made. Hey! I see a lot of happiness and a lot of hope and a lot of just a lot of happiness, and that's what uh, that's what it's all about. That's what you know, volunteering period is all about. But uh, when you get to see it firsthand like this and uh, get to get complete satisfaction, immediate satisfaction, you know, it's it's nice. You know, some other volunteer work you do. You know you're doing good, but you're in the back lines. But here, we are the front lines. We get to go in there and uh, actually watch the kids receive the presents, see the smiles on their faces. Uh, it's their Christmas, you know. Santa Claus coming to see them, is that's their Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And it's just the best feeling. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! is a very busy night for Santa and his two elves, seeing how they're trying to catch up to get back on schedule. And we notice one small, quiet boy who follows Santa from door to door. That's him in the dark blue sweater on the right of the screen. Through all the chaos of kids and gifts, he vanishes as Santa works on through the night. Ho, ho, ho! He is five years old. And somehow, through Santa's visit, Johnny is inspired by the man in red. You see, Johnny isn't on Santa's list of stops this evening, but his spirit isn't broken by a Christmas that never comes. He does his best to keep up with Santa, but it's hard with a heavy cardboard box, a box filled with all of Johnny's worldly possessions. What have you got in there? I got a dinosaur. And you want to give these away? Yeah. How, yes. co how come? Uh, people don't have that. That don't have Christmas presents. You want to give your toys to them? Yeah. And so you've gone to get your presents to give them to other children? Yeah, that don't have presents. Because it's a good thing for Christmas. The Elf Louise volunteers are gone, and the night air falls silent on a little boy with a box. A little boy who's been touched by a visit from Santa who is willing to part with all his worldly possessions just to help make the season special for someone else. Merry Christmas, Johnny. You just made ours very special. That's all of our time for this week, but there's still plenty of time for you to celebrate the holidays in a way that best suits you. So from our family here in Texas country to you and yours, happy holidays. I'm Bob Phillips. This is Texas Country Reporter.
Thanks for hopping in and traveling with us. Now click the subscribe button for more videos like the one you just saw.